G'day folks, we've got fish. So in today's clip, I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at the fish that we've uh, stocked the system with. I'll give you an idea on how we're feeding them and the amounts. And um, yeah, just give you a bit of a general update and we might plan a few seedlings out as well. So these are the fish. A little bit hard for you to see at the moment, but they'll, um, yeah, they'll come right up to the surface as soon as I toss some feed in. Uh, just quickly, what we ended up getting were 30 jade perch. Uh, the bloke that gave them to us did a quick weigh before we picked them up and uh, roughly around about 60 grams each. So we have 1.8 kilograms of biomass in the system, um, which comes into play in a minute when we talk about feed ratios. Uh, now, these guys obviously aren't fingerlings, you can probably tell. They're surplus to his needs. We do have one Tandanus eel-tailed catfish, and that is in the sump tank at the moment. Um, he's a little bit too small and he might get sucked up the um, gap in the slow. Our solar's lifting outlet down in the center there, so we'll let him get a bit of size on, and then he can go in here with these jay perch. Uh, now, these jay perch, they're being conditioned at the moment <laughs> by a tripod with some cardboard, just so they're used to a camera hanging over the top of the tank. And they generally know when I come to the edge that it's time for a feed. And they should all come up to the camera now. So these guys, they're getting, um, as I said before, they, they're getting up there in size. Definitely not fingerlings. So they weigh roughly on average about 60 grams. So multiply that out by 30 and that gives us the 1.8 or 1,800 grams. And multiply that by 1.5% and that gives us 27 grams of this feed. Now they were getting the um, smaller two millimeter pellet to begin with because that's all I had and I had it left over from uh, when I shot the cycling clip as how to cycle an aquaponic system. Um, but this one here is a um, four mil pellet. It's 40% protein and it should be right for these guys pretty much all, all the way through to their adult life. Uh, but we do yeah, tend to um, change the size of the pellets as they grow. Now, just quickly, the 1.5%, that is relevant for um, at the moment because things are starting to cool down a bit. Uh, when things get warmer, they can be fed anywhere up to around about 3% um, of their body weight at a time. So it's just one of those things you have to keep an eye on, weigh your fish regularly. I'll actually leave a, um, a link down to a paper for silver perch feeding rates in the description down below. And I've been told they're pretty much, well, um, yeah, the same rates you can use to feed your jade perch. I'm almost at the end of the bowl here. They've almost done their 27 grams. I'll toss it all in at once. So if they're still hungry after this, I will add a little bit more in. Now, when it came to move these guys, um, I got the chap who gave them to me not to feed them for a while. Actually, he suggested it himself, but it just makes perfect sense. And we brought them home in this little drum here. As you can see, I've got a hole in the top. So I just popped this little jobby back together to give you a look. We have a line with an air stone down in there. And we could lock the lid on with this little lock there. And then we have the air compressor. This is actually a ACDC. It's got a lithium ion and battery backup battery in there. So you just press that and that comes on. And the batteries are a little bit flat now, but it was giving a load of air for the fish, for the transport home. So it's the same system we'll pretty much will be using for mum and dad. Um, when I did transport them, I did find we ended up with some elevated ammonia. So when we got home, we um, luckily we've got reverse osmosis with a low pH uh, water. Uh, so we were able to um, swap water out to keep that ammonia low so they didn't get any um, uh, toxic uh, reactions to the ammonia. And then after I stabilized the pH between the two by adding water in from our system, um, the water system, the system water in here was sitting around about um, 7.2, 7.3. So I basically had to balance out the pH uh, so we could add them into the system here. Now I did have some video of it happening, but I deleted a file that I shouldn't have. Also included a load of mushroom video as well. So I don't have any um, much video of these guys in here and how we um, did the whole procedure, but we might do that with mum and dad's system when we get the fish for their system. So hit that little subscribe button down there if you want to catch that when it happens. Um, yeah, so this little jobby here is our top up water system. As I mentioned, we have 7.1 in the main system and the water when it comes out of the tap here, I did a reading earlier, um, it comes out at around about eight. And so what I'm having to do is just treat it with a little bit of acid, trying to bring it down. I popped some acid in earlier and it went all the way down to 6.8. But as the acid is consuming the carbonates in there, the pH is rising up. Um, so I do have a clip on alkalinity that explains that. You can check it out um, up there somewhere here. 
um, that runs through how alkalinity works. Now the reason why I am trying to lower it is because if I'm putting in 200 litres at a time with a pH of 8, it is actually pushing the pH in this system up to around about 7.3. Actually, we'll pop the meter in and I'll show you. And yeah, this one here is sitting at 7.2. So if I'm putting in pH 8 water into here as a top up at 10, uh, 200 litres at a time, 55 gallons, I'm actually bumping the pH up. I prefer my pH to be lower than 7 if I can, around about 6.8, 6.5 to 6.8. And just a bit of a heads up, uh, the nitrification process for you folks who are new to aquaponics, um, it actually consumes alkalinity out of the water. Uh, the bacteria use it in the um, process of converting the ammonia to nitrites and then nitrites to nitrates. So uh, for that reason, um, the pH will always drop in your system anyway. So eventually I will end up having to add in some um, calcium carbonate or um, actually I prefer calcium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide uh, just a little bit easier to um, monitor how far the pH is moving with the hydroxides so I will end up having to dose that fairly regularly um, but yeah I was hoping the little catfish would come out uh, he likes to um, sun himself up in that back corner there of an afternoon but I think I've just been walking around the top here too much um, as for nutrients in the system, um, yeah, I just smashed another test tube, um, but I did take a reading earlier. Uh, very high um, nitrates, which is to be expected. We've had um, a lot of ammonia go into the system to cycle it. Um, we do have trace ammonia, which is expected, and zero nitrite. So very chuffed with that. Everything's going along smoothly. Uh, what I did do yesterday, though, was harvest a load of warrigal greens out of this bed here. It had actually taken over the majority of the bed and started to crowd out my little uh, mushroom herb cuttings down in there. So I decided to chop that back and we ended up getting around about six meals worth of um, processed blanched spinach leaves um, out of what we got. And as you can see, we still have a load of warrigal greens over here. I'd say pretty much all the same about as what I took off last night. Now, because these are so large, they're going to be chewing up a lot of the nutrients in the system. So I will be coming back to take these out um, over the weekend and we'll blanch them and freeze them as well. So a lot of you folks have been sending me through loads of questions on emails and comments and that sort of thing. Sorry folks, I just can't get to them all. Uh, you folks who are new to aquaponics, just to give you a bit of a heads up, I do have a very substantial playlist that um, runs through some of the basics with aquaponics. There'll be a link in the description and also in a little um, card that pops up there. Uh, please go and have a look at those clips. It answers a lot of the basic things like what is aquaponics, how many fish you can put in the system, gives explanations to different system designs. And if you do leave a question below, I will try and get to it, folks. Uh, like I said, I've just been run off my feet um, answering the comments as they come through at the moment. So I'll stop nattering on and we'll um, jump on over and plan out some seedlings. So what I might actually do is, I might actually plan out the four lettuce just in this area here. And over the back where it's really bright and overexposed, I might pop in a couple of the um, bok choy. Now I have shown you before, but just a little bit of a refresher. I like to use a little bit of um, pipe, 100 mil pipe or four inch pipe. Pop it in the media, dig out the clay. I also like to wash off the roots of the plants before they go in generally. Um, it isn't a huge hassle. Um, look at that. Nice healthy root systems. Thanks, Mark. Um, generally not a huge hassle, but I, it's one of those things, you know, if you want to keep the, um, the soil and the solids out of your bed, it's a good idea to wash them out. I mainly do it when I need to um, separate seedlings. So if I want to separate, say, a bunch of beetroot that have um, shot up together in one little cell, I'll quite often wash the soil off the roots just to make them easier to divide. Um, so, but yeah, it's not necessary. I might pop another one over here. And if you aren't concerned about the, um, the extra soil, it's just a matter of popping them out. Popping them in the little um, pipe like that. Raising them up to level. And there you go. Pretty easy, really. Just to show you, we do have compost worms in here just to look after any of that organic waste turn it into plant available nutrients. Um, they don't process all the fish waste folks, but they will look after um, fallen leaves and roots and that sort of thing. Uh, these guys here would have come in here with, uh, with the media, as a lot of it came in from our old system. So I put him back just to one side so he doesn't get squashed. There you go fella, let you find your own way down.
So that's those four done. Now to pop around and pop in some fuck joy. I'm not really going to worry about the pipe with this lot because I'm just putting the um, whole soil wedge in. So I've just popped a tatsoy and corn salad over in that corner and I'm going to do the same over here. And I'm planting the um, tatsoy fairly deep because they got a little bit leggy just the way I had them sitting in the punnet. And do remember there's a um, 25 mil or one inch dry layer of clay before it hits the water so those um, soft stems won't be sitting in water all the time. Plus it's a flood and drain bed. And then over here, um, I'll pop another one. Helps if I move the camera around. I, di I did notice with the other corn sellers, they don't have really strong root systems. So I'm trying not to um, damage them too much. I am breaking away a little bit of the dirt though because it's a bit crumbly. Yeah, I don't really want to damage them, the roots, because they do look pretty fine. Lift him up just a little bit and that should be enough. And fingers crossed. Uh, they really like it in the aquaponics, so just tidy up these seedlings and then we'll go toss some more food in for the perch. So, I've gone and grabbed roughly half of what they had before, and we'll throw that in, see if they're hungry. Um, I did mention, well, I think I mentioned before that they hadn't been fed for a while, um, so yeah. Um, I don't really see a problem um, giving them a little bit extra today, so I'm not going to throw it all in at once. We'll just wait for them to polish it off, and then I'll toss a bit more in. I think that'll pretty much all do it though. I'll come back after I finish filming and I'll um, remove any feed that's left floating in the tank after five minutes because you don't want your feed to go uh, manky on the bottom of the tank in there. Don't forget, I will be bringing you a clip uh, soon showing you how the radial flow settler has been made. Uh, also to a clip on how we're moving the fish for mum and dad's system. So if you do want to be brought up to date and get a notification when they get posted, all you have to do is click the subscribe button pound on the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notification. Uh, before I go, I really do need to thank those folks who are supporting us over on the um, Farm Your Own Yard website and also over on the YouTube membership platform. Thank you very much folks, really do appreciate the support. Please check out my super contributors, links to websites and Facebook pages down in the description below. But I will pretty much all leave it there, hope you're all well and happy, staying safe in lockdown and your aquaponics are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers folks and have a top one.